crosswind landings, a certain nightmare not just for the beginners, but can put the best to the test. If done right, it can be the one of the biggest confidence boosters on your overall landing technique. But done wrong can cost lives in real life and frustration in the virtual simulation world. Hi, my name is Alan and I'm going to simplify crosswind landings for you in the language you understand and hopefully in the shortest time as possible. So let's get started. It's always helpful, I felt, to get the basic necessary theory in place before attempting to go practical. A crosswind is defined so here is the basic as the wind in various in intensities, which in the flying world can be an obstacle for you to align your plane to the runway center line, as you can see it in the image currently. Think of it like a river stream pushing you downwards. If you want to get to the other side, you can't just cross straight. That'll make you go downstream due to the river current. But upstream so that your upstream motion would cancel some of the downstream motion and you can reach the intended point. So what are the solutions? Well, there are many, but we're going to stick to one. As you can see here, we have the first being the crap approach. And the second being the side slip. The second te technique isn't preferred for big jets like the 737 or the A320 uh, and also the one that we're going to practice on. Hence, that's out of discussion. We will discuss why maybe at the end of this video, uh, but that's for the later part. The first technique is uh, basically the concept as we discussed in the river example. We add an opposite force towards the direction of the wind and basically completing the entire approach with the same stance. So this is the basic technique. Now what changes is what happens during the flare and touchdown. Consider these two options as the subset of the first technique called as the crab approach. Now there are two approaches. One is a decrab during flare, which basically means pointing the nose back to the runway during the flare and before your wheels touch down and the second is pointing the nose back to the runway after your wheels touch down right now there are two conditions why you would try to do this decrabbing before you uh, touch down is usually done during a dry runway conditions right uh, it gives less pressures on the main landing gear and gives better control post landing which is pretty obvious because you don't have to really realign after uh, you touch down and try to get the plane under control right now the second technique which is decrab after touchdown is usually preferred in wet conditions because obviously there is less friction uh, and uh, uh, doing uh, doing decrabbing before flare can be dangerous right so the plan is uh, to align it post landing and combination of braking and reverse thrust is used. Right? So there can be some subsets of uh, even post touchdown uh, techniques. For example, if you allow, uh, apply too much brakes, you, uh, there is a possibility that your plane can actually skid in the entire runway. And this has actually happened a lot of times. And the pilots usually what they will do is they will try to release the brakes and the reverse thrust and then again try to uh, get the entire plane aligned and then again apply braking and reverse thrust so decrab after touchdown has its own challenges and decrab during flare has its own challenges and is used under bas basically different conditions now the maximum allowable crosswind landings wind under the 737 800 is about 36 knots and that's a lot uh, to uh, actually try out even in your simulation I would I would usually recommend person starting from about 15 knots uh, to begin with okay so I've just recorded the final part of uh, the landing and as you can see there's a 25 degree wind coming from 90 degrees and what I'm trying to do is trying to point the nose to the direction of the wind. Approaching two, so now the zero, obvious question nine, that comes to everybody's mind is what do I try to align with the runway? What you try to do is you try to align the right part of the nose 
to the runway right so those fire buttons and master caution button that you see and just the right block to it is what you try to align with the runway and not the nose and you keep this till the end and in the end what we will try to do is we'll try to attempt a normal landing just like everything is normal and we will try to apply rudder and aileron mix at the end so ignore the glide scope the glide slope at the moment right so you can see now we are aligning the right of that nose 50 40 30 1 10 there you go opposite aileron rudder mix there you go right so this is this is like a simplified version of uh, both the methods decrabbing due so this is basically Any almost parts. like a decrab post flare or after touchdown right which works beautifully so now let's try to look how this uh, appears from outside okay so you can see my nose is pointed towards the wind direction ignore the glide slope at this moment because i'm recording at the final moments of just the landing technique right and see see the wind is pushing up and i'm trying to align this part of uh, my plane to the runway right and now see what happens it's a normal landing i touch down i've almost aligned it before the flare itself and then i do the final alignment later on but i have to make sure that put the opposite aileron otherwise this wind will come up and your plane will uh, get uh, destabilized so so let's try to look at it again uh, you will put put uh, i mean sure i mean make sure you focus on the rudder and the aileron right so let us zoom in so look at how i put the opposite aileron can you see that yeah so that's to keep the uh wing stable right uh, as opposed to a320 where this is automatically done in 737 you have to actually manually give the aileron uh you can say your aileron effort to keep the plane stable right so that's all that's almost like a wonderful landing so now let's try to see it again so it's not very difficult if you uh you know practice it uh, the challenge that i've seen for, at least for me uh, has been to maintain that aileron mix see there you go it's a normal landing and there you go aligned align with the runway right so uh, but you have to make sure that uh, you have the basic landing techniques in place otherwise this won't work All right okay now let's try to look at it from uh, inside because it was difficult to talk when i was doing it so there you go okay i'm trying to align this part of my uh, plane to the runway this is where the nose is so there you go right so just doing small corrections at the end making sure this part is all to the left of the center line so that when i actually align i will be on the center line right okay see okay it's a normal landing 20 feet we will close check close hold align rudder opposite aileron look at i'm trying to keep the opposite aileron if i don't do this my entire plane will come uh, rolling to the right now this is that's called a side roll so you try to avoid that so definitely requires a lot of practice but uh, that's the technique that's absolutely the technique and where to look is always the challenge and as i said you look at this direction and perform the basic landing even if you do not let's say uh, are not able to align it uh, absolutely during the perfect time it's okay you will make it up later on because the technique will somehow come right so see you look here 
and perform the basic landing. Check, close, hold. There you go. And there you align. So the alignment as it is will come uh, as you keep practicing. So that's how you nail cross wind landing. Alright, so that was the practical and now some additional points. Okay, now there will never be a situation where you'll get uh, cross winds at 90 degrees. There might be very odd numbers uh, in terms of the direction of the wind, but it would still classify as a cross wind. So in that case, speed corrections are required. Now what's the basic uh, speed correction formula? Uh, the given thumb rule is at a 45 degree angle, which is half of 90, right? Uh, your calculation should be 35% of the cross wind. So you can do an adjusted calculation uh, at every wind direction, right? So for example, if you're talking about uh, 30 knots coming from, let's say 45 degrees. So you just multiply 35% into 30 knots. That would give you a 10 knots correction to your actual VREF. So if your VREF is, let's say 145, then your adjusted speed would be 155 okay if let's say it's a 90 degree as i said there is no calculation which is required right now i have taken some more examples so let's say if uh, it's coming from 60 degrees so if in that case of 60 if you just do a simple cross multiplication you will understand that if 45 degrees is 35 and 60 degrees is x then if you do the arrangement and do the cross multiplication it will be about 47 percent of the wind speed so those are some additional points uh, from my side and uh, which can help you nail that uh, cross wind issue of yours in the simulation world and uh, do share your feedback like my video and share it with people who have this night fire if you didn't like this video do share why so i can make another one to make you like my video still cheers signing off bye bye